You are now tuning in to the Mind Body Podcast, where fitness experts and life coaches share their secrets on taking your mind and your body to the absolute best. This is the advice you wish you heard years ago. Get ready and take notes as we expose the raw truth behind achieving amazing natural physique and strength and ultimately become a stronger version of yourself. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Mind Body Podcast. I'm your host Lidor Dayan and in today's episode I got a very passionate, unique and a very humble guy who is almost 2 million subscribers in his YouTube channel and a community of over 617,000 people worldwide. He truly took the fitness industry to a world new level. So give it up to Scott Herman! <coughs> Excuse me, so without further ado, let's begin the interview. Hi, good morning, Scott. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you for, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, giving me the time to interview you. So Yeah, no worries. For those people that uh, don't really know you, maybe the Israeli audience, um, can you please share with us uh, your journey, how, how fitness began for you? Sure. My, my journey to fitness started when I was about 12 and I, I started working out in my basement and I'm sure like many of you guys listening right now, um, obviously you only can do so much with your father's old weight set. You know, all we had was a bench and a, and a, and a small barbell and a few really small dumbbells, but it was enough to, to ignite the passion. And from there, I, um, I started working at a gym when I was 14 years old. And that basically just started my entire career within the fitness industry because from when I started working in, in a gym, that allowed me to kind of you know really fall in love with not just the, the fitness side of the working outside, but my passion grew for the business side as well. And I continued to work. Uh, for the same for the same gym up until I was about 24 years old and then that's when I decided to start my own business Wow this is really amazing because you really impact a lot of people and you are considered to be one of uh, the top youtubers out there uh, in the fitness area so from your perspective how can you get to like millions of millions of views to people and how you stay uh, stable and uh, can actually uh, maintain this because uh, the more people the the trying to connect with you it's like super uh, hard to stay like focus right oh yeah it's very competitive you have to always be thinking about quality content a lot of people will will come into the YouTube space and they'll just make silly videos. They might get a bunch of like viral things like, you know, Mm -hmm. picking up chicks at the gym and like all these videos you see. But those people don't last because at the end of the day, I mean, who cares really about watching some dude pick up chicks at the gym? You know what I mean? Like I'd I'd rather go outside and pick up chicks on my own than watch some other guy do it. Mm -hmm. I'm married now, so I can't. (laughs) But what I'm just trying to say is, you know, if you want to stay relevant and you want to build a following, you have to let your following know that you're going to provide quality content. And the only way you can let them know that you're providing quality content is by filming it and uploading it consistently. Do, do you feel that, uh, like, for, uh, through the years, like, you need to have better quality, like, in, uh, if we look at camera, HD and stuff, is that really important as well? Yes and no. A lot of times, I mean, it it definitely makes a difference. It definitely makes the videos more fun to watch. I mean, but nowadays you can film most things on a phone and as long as you can hear the audio pretty well, that's enough for people. Because YouTube is more about being raw anyways. And a lot of people just want to see the raw footage of you doing your thing or talking about interesting topics it doesn't always have to be a a major professional setup because they just want the information or they want to talk to you as a person i wanted to ask you like uh, about morning rituals because how we start our day it's really important to our productivity and how 
uh, we uh, handle different situation in in the day so how would you describe your morning ritual how do you start your day my morning ritual is i like to wake up mm -hmm. um, i like to continue my fast until about 11 or 12 o'clock so usually i'll have some um, some bcaas i use amino x and then i like to do in the morning uh, a quick ab circuit just it's just a way for me to kind of get the blood flowing because i work from home so i mm -hmm. sit in front of the computer a lot so yes i like to put on the tv whether it's the news or a show i want to watch and i have a an ab circuit i like to do and i have some stretches i like to do and then that way that kind of gets me ready to, to start my day because for me if i just wake up and then go sit down somewhere i'm basically a zombie yeah. i have to get my, <laughs> my body moving and i don't work out until later on in the day anyways so to to be stagnant all day and then finally the only time i move when i go to the gym that's not good for me did you feel like uh, while you build your business because we all know that when you are building a business especially in the internet then you will have to sit a long long hours in the computer and sometimes it gets people really frustrated because uh, like we know emotions created by emotion if we don't move our body too much then we get like uh, maybe even uh, we start to to feel depressed right so uh, how can you still uh, stay focused and doing hours on hours in the internet what what do you, would you recommend to people to that uh, in this situation right now no that you know that's so true because a lot of times i'll just pick different rooms in the house mm -hmm. or different areas to work because if I'm working in the same area day after day after day, it kind of feels like whenever I look at that room, it looks like a prison to me. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I don't want to go to prison <laughs> every day. <laughs> do do so, you also uh, go out and do it? Well, for the, for the most part, I'll just, I'll just pick a different room in my house. Like mm -hmm. I'll go to maybe like my man cave and work in there, or I'll go in the kitchen and, and set up my laptop there and give give my office a few breaks before I go back into my office and get some stuff done but yeah you know when you work from home you a lot of people think it's super amazing and it is great but at the same time you know you start to see your home as a uh, prison because it's, it's work 24 7 mm -hmm. so you really have to figure out a way to to make sure that you have some time to yourself I'm married I make sure that I have time for my wife um, I make sure I take breaks if I'm starting to feel a little like I'm working a little too much. Mm -hmm. So I'll go, you know, play video games or, or watch TV or something just to kind of disconnect from the work and then come back to it and, and feeling a bit more fresh. Yes, because uh, like we, we always try to do so much then we have a lack of, pro, uh, of uh, creativity because if we push ourselves too much and we start to get like discouraged then our creativity decreased. I know it for myself because lately I've been trying to do so much that I, I literally didn't enjoy it anymore. So I said, okay, I gotta take a step back and maybe go out a little bit to see the world because I'm in America now for three months and last time I've been here it was like uh, about uh, 12 years ago. So I said, I need to enjoy it <laughs> while I'm here, right? <laughs> yeah hell yeah yeah you know, that's so true you you definitely will see a dive in creativity if you spend a lot of time on the computer it's just it just happens and it's it's horrible but you gotta find ways to get around that to keep things going for me you know no no other youtubers really have a website kind of like i have where i've built more of like an online community and you know, I'm always trying to figure out new ways to make my site better and add content to the site. So it's a lot of work. It, it's very demanding. And, you know, it's not like I can just, you know, go outside and film myself and vlog all day like a lot of other people because vlogging at the end, at the end of the day is fun and it's great. But, you know, if you're if you're not if you're just vlogging, that doesn't last forever. You know, I mean, once people are done watching your vlogs, then you really get no views, you know? Mm -hmm. 
and uh, how can you actually build uh, a team around you because if we look at uh, at the scale like you are in at, and it's millions of people in YouTube and you have uh, a great community how can you build a great team not just okay like really good team that uh, follow the vision uh, and uh, are really good that's actually been my main goal this year is finding like-minded individuals who share my passion and share my vision of what I see YouTube fitness turning into over the next few years and to be it, it's really hard to do <laughs> to be honest it's really hard because you know I reach out when I reach out to other youtubers and I try to find people that are doing what I'm doing you know it's not just you know people who make videos they have to have you know a good knowledge base of fitness they have to know how to write you know properly yeah. how to present themselves properly they have to have the, the drive to want to produce quality content on a weekly basis so I've found a few people that I that I've just started working with and I'm starting to get more of their content on my site we're starting to do some more collabs on YouTube but you know it, it unfortunately not every single person has those qualities as much as they want to be successful on YouTube and it's just something you have to learn over time you know I went to school to for my business degree to really learn how to how to be good at running the business side of things you know being more than just a, a personality so you really have to find people that kind of have that same background so that you're not babysitting them the entire time mm -hmm. I think it's really about uh, having a hunger and being able to sustain that hunger over time like uh, and really have something that's bigger than this, just yourself and you probably uh, can be related to this like when you just started your YouTube and the more followers that uh, came like you you are really see yourself as kind of a leader because you build community you people are actually uh, waiting for content from you so you you feel like you're this is something that you you want to do for them not just for yourself right correct we all know that uh, life is a roller coaster and we all experience good and bad moments that can affect uh, our decisions and performance as a professional how can you stay focused and not letting the stuff that happens in your life mess with your work like the YouTube the side you just have to tell yourself because at the end of the day, I mean, this is a business, it's a job for me. You know, just like in real life, everybody else in the world, if you have a job and you gotta be there 9 a.m. every single day, hey, you gotta show up, no matter what's going on in your life. And the same thing applies to what I do. If I don't show up to work every single day to work my business, the business is gonna fail, and then I'm gonna be out of luck, and. Then I'm gonna have some real problems, like no place to live, no food to eat, you know, and mm -hmm. if you break it down to the basic essentials of living, you know, that's that's obviously a big part of the motivation, but the other part of it is, you know, you gotta take time to, to decompress and visualize what's most important to you. You know, if you're if you're having a hard time and you get some problems going on in your life, that's probably the best time to sit down and just kind of clear your head and maybe start writing down some of your goals that you're trying to accomplish and some of the things that are most important to you and if you're having problems in your in your life with relate me you know maybe it's time for a new relationship you know you should mm -hmm. just like in business if there's a problem you get to fix it just and so in your life if you're having problems that are affecting you know everything else you know not just your business but like your relationships with friends and family and you need to address those problems and fix them. I think a lot of people, you know, they spiral down because they never really take the time to address problems that are happening in their life. They just always kind of think, well, they'll get better on their own, but that doesn't happen, you know? Yes. Most people, when they see like you today, they see that they think like it's uh, something that you always been like, and it's just like creating habits, right? Because uh, YouTube when you first started probably your first videos was not that good <laughs> like most people when they just start 
but the more you do something then you become better at it so uh, w when you started y it was like how long ago about seven years ago seven years ago and th this is really amazing like the what you did in seven years and w when you uh, started out like what was the vision what did you see when you started, did you know back then that it will become like where you are now? No, to be honest, my vision back then is I just wanted to find a way to help more people reach their fitness goals worldwide because I was working in a gym as a general manager and, you know, I saw a lot of people that would come to the gym and they couldn't afford training and they would just quit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being a personal trainer and a general manager, obviously, you know, from the business side of things, I didn't want people quitting my gym. And then from the trainer side of things, it, it, it really broke my heart that people would come in really excited to train, mm -hmm. but then they just would have no idea what to do. So they would just leave, you know, and they would never come back. And so I wanted to find a way to, to at least guide these people so that they could come to the gym and, and start to work out on their own you know, if they couldn't afford training. And then that's where the YouTube videos came in. I would literally have people come to the gym and I'd say, hey, if you need help in any of these machines, you know, here's my my YouTube fitness channel. Uh, you can learn how to use all the machines on my, on my channel because I basically would just stay, that's why I have so many how-to videos. I would stay at the gym after hours and I would just film how-to videos on every single machine in the gym. Mm -hmm. Th this is so beautiful because you were f so focused on contributing to help others. This was your main goal and this is what makes you uh, one of the top YouTubers in the world because you always see others and not just uh, your, yourself and your needs. And this is why you're still there, out there and put it in for because you always think about the others. You always think about uh, you helping others and this is uh, why uh, there are some people that are the best in what they do and the best leaders because they always see themselves as leaders to others and they want to contribute more to the society and uh, this is uh, very important for people who started i think uh, in youtube or any other area that if all they want is more money then it i think it will push them but not as much as if it's a mission, it's a vision, it's something that you want to to have a better world that more people can become more educated about what you love to do, right? Oh, I agree 100%. Um, you really got to have a vision of what you want. And that's why I say, like, I've seen, I've seen lots of people in fitness YouTube come and go, you know, a, a year, maybe two years max, because it just people start to realize the videos are more about themselves not mm -hmm. not to help others and you know after a while it's just who cares if it's just about them unless you're a Card unless you're a Kardashian you know people don't really have that much interest in your life <laughs> so all you gotta do you want to be famous just get a really good it can't be a bad sex tape it has to be a good one huh. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to ask you, like, what is your vision for life, your mission? Do you see yourself as a, as a leader, as a, someone who has a mission in life? That, what, what is your vision and mission in life? My vision right now is to continue to make my website, MuscularStrength.com, the one of the official hubs for, for quality fitness information and, and community building. My, my website is basically like the fitness version of Facebook where you can make a profile and then you can make friends with other people and you have access to great information. There's forums where you can interact and ask questions. And my goal is to continue to start bringing some of these like-minded YouTubers that are creating quality content onto the website and start pumping out content that's actually going to help people because most people now, you know, they have a really hard time, like we talked about, finding quality information. You know, you might see 30 videos that say chest workout, you know, to build muscle, but maybe three of them are actually quality chest workouts. Mm -hmm. And on my website, any video you watch is quality. 
and I think that, that that's going to become the the future for for YouTube Fitness, where yeah, you're hosting the videos on YouTube and you're able to find things on YouTube, but you go to a website like mine where I take those videos and I organize them and I make them easily accessible. So if you're searching for specific information or on specific topics, you know every single thing that you click on is going to be quality information. At the end of the day, you're just wasting your own time if you're trying to find stuff and you have to click through 30 videos, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Do you want to do seminars as well? Because internet business is very good, but do you want to do like seminars and actually be there with other people and connecting? Yeah, I've thought about getting into public speaking and, and seminars. You know, when when I, I want to start doing those, I have to just make sure that all my all my ducks are in a row with what I'm trying to build with my website first and this is probably going to be the last year of doing some major re overhauling and, and rebuilding of the site and then once all those you know wheels are spinning I feel more comfortable you know leaving and going out and getting other things done because you know like we talked about earlier you don't want to take on too many things at once and if I'm trying to really just kind of hammer down and 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 build something really great here on my website I don't want to be out traveling all the time, you know, doing mm -hmm. doing seminars and speaking engagements just yet because then work's going to pile up on the things I'm trying to get done at home with my website, you know? Mm -hmm. So my goal is this year to really get a, a firm handle on getting everything finished that I've tried to, been trying to accomplish over the last few years at my site and then start to move into you know, the world of speaking engagements and seminars and really getting my message out there. Do you think it's really important to also stay consistent on one thing? Because uh, social media has been grown so massively and so many people are trying to do so many stuff like, okay, I need to do blog, I need to do Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Snapchat, podcast. So is it uh, good to do a lot or you prefer like okay I will stick to just one thing YouTube and go from there yeah that's a really good question and I feel like when you when you're committed to so many different things that your qual your quality of what you're trying to produce definitely goes down um, for me I mainly just focus on YouTube Instagram and Facebook and obviously my own website I don't do snapchat um, I don't do Pinterest I don't do you know vine or a lot of these other things because I just know I don't have the time for it you know and my the quality of what I'm gonna put out there on those different platforms mm -hmm. isn't gonna be that great but I at least know what YouTube Facebook and Instagram and my site that a lot of the content that I'm placing on those things you know go hand in hand like if I do a new YouTube video I'm gonna post it on Facebook you know if I write an article for my site I'll post that on Facebook if I take a photo at the gym or if I'm doing something cool, I can post it on Instagram and Facebook. Or if I want to do, if I want to film a YouTube video, I can also attach my cell phone to my to my camera, and I can do Facebook Live while filming my YouTube video. So those things kind of go hand in hand, and that's why I, I choose to do them together. But for me personally, yeah, I, I I think it's best to pick the few that you know you can do a really good job with, and keep those as your main focus. Yes, and you said that you're also married now, right? Oh yeah. So how long you've been married? <laughs> Almost three years. Nice. And uh, do you see it's really challenging to like having a relationship while having a big business, online business? Because uh, I interview lately uh, a guy that interview you. Uh, you know him, Mike Matthews. So, oh yeah, Mike's an awesome guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. And uh, he is uh, like really, uh, he, he, is, he won't consider he's a workaholic, but he work a lot. And he said that, yeah, it, uh, at one time, like in his relationship, it uh, got uh, a little bit uh, into it. But do you see it's, uh, you know, like when it's, you know how to handle it, you know how to, okay, this time I'm doing work and it's not going to interrupt my relationship. Yeah, you know, there definitely 
has to be balance in your life. Balance is going to always come first. You have to make sure you balance things. And, and even Mike told me when I, I've, I've talked to Mike a lot of times, you know, he, he likes to set up certain times where he does certain things mm -hmm. just to make sure he has enough time for everything. But, you know, for me personally, so, so one of my main goals this year has been to start waking up earlier because for, for a big part of my life, I, I, even, I used to work until like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. that I wouldn't be able to get up until like 10 or 11 the next day. I'd just be so tired from, from working so much and lifting so much that there's no way I can go to bed that late and get up early again. It's just not going to happen. And I created this like really bad pattern of, you know, even if I wasn't working at night, I, I just couldn't fall asleep until like two or three o'clock. You know, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the early bird gets the worm. You know, that's the, that's one of the best sayings out there. Mm -hmm. You know, the Sim and the Simpsons just recently had an episode where Homer had to start getting up early and going to work because uh, his, his kids were having nightmares from Camp Krusty and he was being like sexual de sexually deprived <laughs> and he just started getting all kinds of work done because he was getting up early he was there before everybody else and you know so he had all this extra time and it's so true and a lot of the times you know we can find extra time if we really you know allocate our, our schedules towards things that are important to us and I know that if I get up at like six o'clock in the morning and I work really hot, then I'll go to the gym earlier. So I'll go to the gym like around three or four and I'll get home like around maybe six or seven that I can do a few more hours of work. And then, you know, around nine o'clock I can lay down with my wife and, you know, spend some time with her at night and watch TV and, and, and chat and catch up. Now, obviously we see each other throughout the day cause we both work from home, but mm -hmm. you know, at least during the week, I can really allocate my schedule towards getting everything I need done and then having time for her at night and then, you know, go out on the weekends together and, and kind of do more fun stuff on the weekends because I'm not going to be working, you know, all day Saturday or Sunday. So, yeah, even even being a workaholic, you can still find time for quality in your relationship. You just have to make sure that you have a plan, you know, just like business. You have to have a plan, you know, if you have a hard time spending time with loved ones treat it like a business and be like all right at six o'clock i'm gonna go spend time with my friends my family my parents my my girlfriend my you know my boyfriend or my my wife or whoever you're in a relationship with mm -hmm. and treat it treat it like that it's not weird you know it's 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 if anything it's i'd rather i'd rather people think of, people think that i'm weird if i'm scheduling time for my wife and my calendar, <laughs> you know, rather than just have it be a natural thing, because for, for people like Mike and myself that, you know, we are workaholics, you know, for us, we got to see everything as like a time schedule, you know, and you, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. Yes, you're absolutely right. And, and do you see yourself like today, uh, a really happy and fulfilled person? Because most people are trying to uh, walk, 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 do a lot of stuff that they seek their happiness in the future and they are not in the moment and uh, if we're, we're not living in the moment and actually experience and love the journey then we will always try to seek happiness for the future for, for things, to hold it on into things so do you see yourself now a really happy and fulfilled person and how was it like, like if I take you like far, 5 or 10 years ago? I would say now, yes, and a big part of that is because of my wife. So maybe like, you know, when, even when I first met my wife and the time up until then, I was always happy and I always felt really accomplished, but I was always thinking like, what's next, what's next, what's next, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I, I could have just landed like an amazing, an amazing job or an amazing thing. You know, I mean, I've been on TV, I've done all these crazy things, but I've always seen every single thing I've done as a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that feeling should ever go away if you're trying to build something big and you have vision. Like you should always you should always be looking for the next step and you should never be 100% satisfied because if you if you're ever 100% satisfied, you know, what's the point of of having drive to continue to to work hard, you know? But right. my wife 
brought a quality to my life that I never really had before where, you know, she is more of a living in the moment kind of person. Mm -hmm. And so, like, for example, I've traveled a lot before I met my wife and I've done a lot of, a lot of cool things, but you know, she makes sure that every single year, you know, we travel somewhere new and I'll, I'll bitch and complain about it. I'll be like, I don't have time to travel. I can't travel right now. I got stuff to do and I'll complain every time. But when we get there, I have a lot of fun, you know, and I, and I, and I realize like, okay, it's, it's not as, it's not taking as much time as I thought it would. I can still get things done on my laptop. I can go see some amazing stuff. I can create some amazing memories with my family. So, you know, it, like I said, I'll still complain about it, but I, you know, even today, you know, my wife is like, I want to go to Paris again. And I'm like, we've already been to Paris three times. I don't want to go to friggin' Paris, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, you know, but if, if we do end up going, you know, actually we're going to Greece this year, which I'm really excited about. Oh, nice. I want to go, I want to go explore all the amazing things in Greece. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I probably wouldn't be as excited to go on a trip if, as I am now, if it wasn't for my wife, because she makes me live in the moment. And plus, you know, I, if I go to Greece, I can still film stuff for my YouTube channel. Yeah. I can still kind of, you know, you know, get some some cool stuff for for my fans and community while having fun with my family. And I guess that's another big part of it too. Like, you got to make sure that if you're in a relationship, that that person understands your passion. So, for example. You know, my wife, she just started a YouTube channel. She already has like 9,000 subscribers. Her mm. videos, she did a fashion channel. Her videos get like between like 15 to 60,000 views depending on, you know, what she's talking about fashion wise. And, you know, now when we travel, she'll help me film stuff. And then she wants to go to like all these fancy stores and I film her when she's in the stores. and. Mm -hmm. We just we just make it a part of our life, you know. We have fun together. Yeah, it's so uh, good to find some. It's hard to find, but when you find it, like somebody that uh, uh, really understand you and uh, do the the same stuff as you, then it's much more. I think easy to to hand manage like this kind of relationship, and it's also important what you said, like. You've always been really high achiever, right? You've always been like, what's the next scene? What's the next scene? I always try to seek for more and I want to explore more so I can uh, show myself how far I can go. But uh, there are, we all know that there are so many people out there in the world that are really high achievers and eventually you, they end up uh, uh, killing themselves or in drugs and... Uh, for most people, it's be, I think it's because they never find their true fulfillment, their truly happiness. And we're, we're just trying to just uh, achieve. So we will achieve, but we, we will not feel the greatest thing, which is uh, truly being fulfilled and happy in our life. And You are 100% right, my bro. Mm -hmm. The last question that I wanted to ask you, that I always ask, uh, every person that I interview, what is the legacy that you would like to live long after you want to be here? The legacy I want to leave is that, you know, no matter who you are, where you come from, if you have a vision and a passion, you know, you can, re you can make it happen. And, you know, for me, I grew up in a small town in, New ha in Salem, New Hampshire. You know, I wasn't the most popular kid in high school. I was bullied when I was younger. You know, I get the same sad story mm -hmm. as a lot of other people do. And, you know, there's an old saying that my dad told me once, which, you know, I always, always kind of resonates with me. And it, the saying goes like this. There was a father who had two sons. And the father was an alcoholic and, you know, ab was abusive, was a jerk you know, in and out of jail and just was a real scumbag. And his two sons, one of them became really, really, really successful, got married, had a, has a nice family, has nice things, has a lot of money. And then the other son turned out just like their dad, abusive, um, alcoholic, in and out of jail. And uh, a news reporter interviewed both kids and said, 
why do you think you turned out the way you did? And both kids had the same answer. They said, look at my father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you, th if you think about that, and you kind of apply that to your life and perspective, you know, one guy became really successful because he didn't want to be like his dad. And one guy became just like his father because he just figured, you know, he just gave up. You know, he didn't have any, any passion, any drive to want to be different. So he just used an excuse. But well, my dad's like that, so I'm going to be like that too. Yes, it's and like, feel, uh, you're absolutely right. It's like the, the past does not equal the future. And what we focus on in any moment in time, it's we're going to feel. And if we will relate to our past, then we will always live in the past. So in every moment, we, we can decide that, okay, this is going to change or I will still use this as an excuse to not uh, follow my dreams or my passion or what I want to do in my life. Correct. And I think that's a really good, a really good story that puts things in, into perspective for people. And that's, you know, that's how I want to be. I want people to, to look at themselves like, you know, I could have listened to all the people that told me, you know, you're, you're from a small town, you know, there's people that are smarter than you, bigger than you, more, always going to be more successful than, always going to be, you know, doing better than you. Mm -hmm. And I just said, that's great. I'm still going to do better. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I always just kind of, you know, laughed it off and I'm like, well, you know what? You know, if they're going to make millions, I'm going to make billions or... Mm -hmm. You know, I just, just whatever I could say to, to really put myself, uh, you know, as high as I could. Like, I'm a, my wife and I actually made a video yesterday uh, to put on her, her YouTube channel. I got a funny story for you, too. So, so the guy that I worked for my whole life um, at the gym, you know, he, he, he became, you know, obviously a really close friend of mine. And he really took me under his wing. I had worked for him since I was 14 years old. So... You know, he probably saw me like a son, you know, and he really took care of me. And by the time I was, you know, 24 and I started doing all this other stuff and uh, I started doing, you know, YouTube and, you know, at that point, it, you know, nobody ever thought you could make a living doing YouTube videos. Like it was just unheard of, you know, mm -hmm. and he, you know, he was getting really, I wouldn't say angry with me, but, you know, he, he, he's a very outspoken kind of guy and he'll tell you what, what's on his mind and he's like, He's like, you know, he goes, you're, he goes, you're an idiot. You need, to, you need to pay attention to your gym and that what we're doing here. And, you know, you're, you're not going to ever make that much money doing this. And you're not going to, you know, be that successful. And there's people out there that, you know, are bigger than you and, and more ripped than you and smarter than you. He's like, why is anybody going to want to listen to you? And to the average person, it might sound like he's being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> But he, he's just, he was just saying those things because he cared and he just wanted to make sure I wasn't living in a cardboard box, you know, by the time I was 30 because I wasn't focused on the right things. But, you know, even back then, you know, he's saying all these things to me and I just laugh and I said to him, his name is Dave, I said, you know what, Dave, that's all right. I'm still going to make billions of dollars. <laughs> and I just would walk out of the room and he would get so frustrated with me, you know. <laughs> But that's just the kind of person I was. Like, if I had a vision or a dream, I was going to seek it out. And, you know, and, and, and today he's one of my biggest supporters. And he, he, he sees what I did and he, he applauds me on being able to have this vision to, to kind of go after what I wanted. And, I, and I'm happy that he cared as much as he did because, you know, he, even though he was trying to steer me away at the, at the end of the day he was also really kind of pushing me further because i'm the kind of person where i react better to to negative reinforcement you know i had a lot of really uh really uh douchebag uncles growing up <laughs> <laughs> negative reinforcement is always going to drive me harder than positive reinforcement unfortunately <laughs> oh, yeah if you tell me i can't do something i might agree with you if you tell me i can't do something you'll piss me off and then I'll really make sure it gets done, you know? Yeah, uh, but you, you, ne you, like you said, you've been, uh, in your early years, you've been bullied, you, you were like shy kid too? Oh, I was extremely introverted as a kid. I always kept to myself. Uh, the even in college, I still really had it broken out of my shell in college and I was, you know, I got made fun of all the time from kids in my class because I would bring my cooler to, to, to school, well, to, to my classes in college. 
to eat my food. I would make my food every morning. I'd do brown rice. I would do pasta. I'd make chicken, and I would just bring that with me. And you know, they wouldn't make fun of me to my face because I was bigger than them. But they would. I could tell they were always, you know, kind of chuckling at me. And you know, then like my my junior year of college when I won best abs on the East Coast for Men's Health magazine brought that magazine in and I showed everybody mm. you know who they were making fun of for the past three years and they kind of shut their mouths after that <laughs> <laughs> you know and even when I was on the real world I, I still wasn't completely you know out of my shell I think that my experience would have been a lot different now versus back then I would have been a lot more outspoken on a lot more different things but you know, maybe that was a good thing because I can get, I, you know, if, if you're, if you've known me my whole life, you know, like my best friends, they know I'm a little crazy, uh. <laughs> you know, unfortunately what you guys see on YouTube is a very small fraction of how crazy I can get. And that's fine. You know, I want to make sure that on YouTube and my professional life that people see me as professional and that they, they feel comfortable you know, coming up to me and talking to me. And, you know, I think one of the things I've been able to accomplish the most is when I do events like the Arnold or the Olympia and I get to meet a lot of my subscribers that, mm -hmm. you know, they leave after meeting me seeing the same person that they see, you know, on YouTube because mm -hmm. I do put a lot of my personality into, into what I do online. And I think that's what helps people connect with me, you know? Yes. This is but, so important. Yeah. It's so important to really be yourself and not try to be somebody else. And uh, then when you connect to your followers, it's like getting you so much energy. Like uh, I can see, tell for myself uh, that people are connecting with me and telling me how my videos impact their life. It's like, wow, this is so much uh, amazing feeling than just like, okay, another person bought my course or something because when I actually experience the the people that connect with me it's like so much wow <laughs> exactly I agree with you 100% yeah uh, so thank you really very much for the time that uh, you gave me and uh, my audience uh, and where can we find you so you guys can find me on YouTube Scott Herman Fitness on Facebook or Instagram Scott Herman Fitness and if you guys are looking for a website where you can make friends and get quality information. I have tons of full 12 week programs that you guys can choose from to build muscle or lose fat or even work out from home in real time with me. We actually do the workouts together. You can go to my website, musculostrength.com and join me there. I'd be more than happy to take all of you guys on and help you reach your goals. You heard it from the one and only Scott Herman. <laughs> thank you very much, brother. Really appreciate no, thank it. Thank you, Lador. Appreciate <laughs> it. If you enjoyed this interview or any other one from the Mind Body Podcast, feel free to subscribe to my podcast at iTunes, SoundCloud, and at my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share or leave a message at the comments below because your opinion is really important to me. Just like I always say, Leaders create leaders, and we all here to grow together. For more information about fat loss, gaining muscle, and taking your mind to a new level, check my site at www.lidodayan.com. Till then, never, ever forget to smile. See you soon.